welcome to Chem Crackers. Today, we're looking at Le Chatelier's Principle. Le Chatelier's Principle states that if a system is in equilibrium and it is subjected to a change, then the system will respond by carrying out processes which oppose the change imposed. So, Le Chatelier's Principle is used to describe um, how different factors affect equilibrium. Let's look at the factors. Now, those factors include concentration, temperature, pressure, and catalyst with an asterisk, and we'll explain why later. The effect of temperature. Now, the effect of temperature depends on whether the reaction is exothermic or endothermic. Now, consider this reaction. Nitrogen reacting with hydrogen to produce ammonia. The reaction is a gas phase reaction and the enthalpy change is about nine, minus 92 kilojoules per mole. Now, if the reaction is exothermic, like this one, the forward reaction, and you increase the temperature, the Chatelier's principle says that the reaction that absorbs the extra heat will be favored. In other words, the endothermic reaction will be favored. So if I increase the temperature on this reaction, the forward reaction is, en is exothermic, therefore the reverse reaction would be endothermic. So increasing the temperature here would cause the yield to decrease. All right? So increasing temperature would shift the equilibrium to the left and the yield would decrease. Another way of saying that the yield would be decreased is to say that more nitrogen and hydrogen will be formed and less ammonia. Equilibrium shifts to the left. If I want to increase the yield of ammonia, therefore, then I would employ low temperature condition. Now, pressure can be considered in two ways. There is partial pressure, which is proportional to concentration and therefore affects the equilibrium position in the same way as concentration. And then there is total or external pressure. Now, the Chatelier's principle says that if I increase the external pressure, the system is going to try to relieve that pressure. And it does so by reacting to produce fewer molecules. After all, it's the molecules hitting the walls of the container that creates the pressure inside the container. So, if I increase the pressure, the reaction that produces fewer molecules will be favored. On the other hand, if I decrease the pressure, the reaction that produces more molecules will be favored. So, if we look at the same example, production of ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen, we see that on the left hand side, we have four molecules of, of mo four molecules of gas, and on the right hand side, we have two molecules of gas. So what we're going to do is that if we want to produce ammonia, more ammonia, increase the proportion of ammonia in my equilibrium concentration, then I would increase the pressure because that would shift the equilibrium to the side with just two molecules instead of four. And that's the effect of pressure. Let's look at the effect of concentration. Now, if I increase the concentration of one of these reactants, remember what the system wants to do. It wants to oppose that change so it can restore the original equilibrium. So if I increase the concentration of nitrogen, the system is going to say, no, I want to get rid of that extra nitrogen. And so it's going to react the nitrogen with hydrogen to produce ammonia. So if I increase the concentration of nitrogen, the yield of ammonia increases. The equilibrium shifts to the right and the yield or conversion percentage increases. Now, we are going to demonstrate that 
using SORI. Now SORI is a type of indicator and um, indicators are weak organic acids. I'm using IN for the anion part of the indicator and H for the acid of course. Now when they dissociate they give you H plus ions and the ionic form of the indicator. Now what happens is that generally the molecular form has one color and the ionic form has a different color. And so for soil, I'm going to use HSO and that's dissociate to give me H plus and SO minus. Now let's look and see what is the acid color of soil and what is the basic color of soil. We're going to see how we affect this equilibrium by changing the concentration of the acid. Right, now here we have a piece of soil. I'm going to put it in a plastic bag. I'm going to try and extract the soil by crushing it. All right, so we're going to transfer our crushed soil to a cup. I'm going to add a little water to see if we're able to get any. All right, we might need to, to crush it a little bit more. I'm going to try and do that. And we can see that the color there is red. So I'm going to pour a little bit of my soil. Out. There we go. And then I'm going to add a little bit of my vinegar to see what is the acid color. Now, if I add the acid, that should shift the equilibrium to the molecular side. All right? And we can see the acid color. And indeed, it stays red. So, the molecular soil soil in the molecular form is red. Now, suppose I try to shift that equilibrium now. Suppose I pull out some of the H plus ions. Remember, remember, soil, we can just confirm that this part is red. We just added vinegar and that would have shifted the equilibrium to the molecular side. So, the HSO or molecular soil is red. What about the ionic form? Let's add some. So, here's what we're going to do. I have here some baking soda. And I'm going to take my spoon. I'm going to add some of the baking soda. Now, the baking soda, of course, will remove the H plus ions because baking soda sodium hydrogen carbonate will neutralize some of the acids. So I'm going to add just a little bit. You can see a little bit of a color change there. And the more I add, what's happening? It's turning purple and it's going, it's going, it's going blue, isn't it? So you can see that the ionic form of the soil is Blue. And so we can shift this equilibrium to the left or to the right by manipulating the concentration of H plus ions. If we increase H plus ions, equilibrium shifts to the left in response. And if we, if we decrease the H plus ions by adding the baking soda, equilibrium shifts to the right and gives you the ionic blue soda. Can I shift it back? Suppose I add some. Do I have enough to shift it back? Whoops. Maybe we can. There you go. Equilibrium shifts back to the left once we get rid of the excess baking soda in the mixture. And that's looking, demonstrating the impact of concentration on chemical equilibrium. Now the last factor is catalyst, effect of catalyst. Catalysts do not affect the equilibrium position. They only affect the time it takes to reach equilibrium. In other words, the reaction rate overall. In, so catalysts 
have no impact on the position of equilibrium. And that is why we put an asterisk beside it from the beginning. That's all for today, looking at the Chatelier's principle and the impact of certain factors on equilibrium. Join us next time. Remember to share the video, bust a like on it, and subscribe for more chemistry crackers.